Raids by the counter-terrorism police, ambushes by defamation lawyers, John Barillaro, the Deputy Premier of New South Wales. Like Wiley Coyote in The Roadrunner has been laying traps for his nemesis, Jordan Shanks, the YouTuber. But The Roadrunner has had the last laugh. John Barillaro must have choked on his cornflakes the other day when he read the news that his nemesis, the YouTuber, Jordan Shanks, had raised $1 million from the public for his legal defense fund. Defamation or suing for hurt feelings or loss of reputation is a very high stakes game and Australia has the most draconian defamation laws in the world. You can sue people and get millions of dollars out of them simply because your feelings have been hurt. It's about hurt feelings, but it's also about money. The dynamics of defamation is the rich person that can afford the best lawyers and can outspend the other party generally wins. That's why people just cave in and give apologies and pull stories all the time from publication because they know that if they were to fight it and they risk losing, they have to pay the costs of the other side. That means Jordan Shanks would have to pay the costs of John Barillaro's lawyers, the court costs and his own lawyers costs. So we're talking millions of dollars. So if you're heading into this with a modest house in the suburbs, you come out of it with no house, with no assets. You blow up your entire life's work financially. And that's what defamation lawyers really trade on. They trade on menace, on fear, on threatening people with this process that if you don't pull your story from publication, we will take you to the cleaners. We will take your assets. Your house will be the swimming pool in our holiday house. This is what's going on with defamation. We have had at Michael West Media three defamation threats in the past three months. But the Deputy Premier has a conundrum. He's in a bit of a lose-lose situation. If he wins, and that is entirely possible, this is a real lottery. It can come down to a turgid debate between lawyers over one word. Wins on a minor imputation, wins on a range of imputations, it doesn't matter because he will have faced cross-examination and some mud will stick. It will be a media circus. It will have high media profile. That's good for Jordan Shanks, and he can use that as content. It's bad for John Barillaro because what he's trying to do is to muzzle Shanks. Now, the circus has already begun because there's just been a directions hearing. And in that hearing, there was great consternation by both parties over the nature of corruption. So John's lawyers are arguing that corruption is OK because John is very open about pork barrelling. That's OK. It's par for the course. It just happens. These are interesting things for academics and academic lawyers to debate. Indeed, for lawyers to waste endless taxpayer dollars in court debating. The problem, of course, is that who pays for all this? Well, the losing party will pick up the tab, but also we pay in court time. All of this in the midst of an absolute crisis in New South Wales, particularly in Sydney. The pandemic is out of control. Barillaro himself has admitted they don't know what's working and what's not. And here we are, agonising in the courts at taxpayer expense over hurt feelings. But there's a far more profound issue at stake here, which is free speech for all of us. Because Barillaro has joined Google as a defendant in the proceedings with Shanks. Now, the ramifications here are that if a court in Australia decides that Google is a publisher, that would mean that Google would have to be responsible for everything that it published on its platform. Everything. Would they continue to exist as a corporate entity in Australia? Would Facebook continue to exist if this precedent were set? Google and Facebook would have to go, well, we can't publish that. We have to shut down this. We have to shut down that. We have to shut down everything. And the dynamics of the media, of course, where we have a situation where the mainstream media now, the Canberra bubble, is so under the thumb of the government. The only buffer against that is the freedom of speech that we have via Google, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, etc. These are where we can express opinions which are important to big issues that Australians face, economic issues, social issues, and so on. Can we have those debates? 
If a court finds against Google and finds that the social media platforms are actually publishers, the ability of the ordinary person, indeed independent journalists, to be able to withstand defamation suits will go. There'll be too many, will be swamped. I mean, what constitutes hurt feelings? Recently, a neighbor of mine was sued for calling somebody else in the building a pest. It was over somebody who left their letterbox open too often. $40,000, $60,000 payout, something like that. A waste of court time, a waste of all of our resources. The defamation laws, as they are, are draconian. They're wrong. They need to be reformed. They need to come into the digital age. And if this spreads to social media platforms, it's all over for free speech and debate about important issues of public interest.